So you need to you need to speak words, please. Like the um, alphabet. Throw me the alphabet. Yeah, I don't know the alphabet. I'll I'll say we've got some good topics here. We've got the okay. NARS new fear okay. housing. Okay. This is Byron Lazine, and on the other screen, Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 103 of The Real Word. Word is up. Another one of these satellite shows while I'm down here enjoying Naples, Florida. What's the temperature where you are, Nicole, are, today? Is he on this side of me? Is he on? Um, are you actually, to get me? This, I, I can't see you, so I'm winging this. So the, the temperature actually over the weekend was like 70. You missed it. It was beautiful. Um, but today it's probably. Um, it's gray. It's probably mm. 30 today. Good. Yeah. I don't Good. need to see him. I'm okay. Honest. I'm inside temperature controlled, but it is 85 outside. So it's a good yeah. thing. And my lips are a little chapped. I'm, I'm certain yours aren't, but mine are. Yeah. Um, and as you can tell, my hands are a different color than my face because I have to over powder up here in the Northeast, but huh. it's all good. You can't spray tan the hands. Oh, I'm going to spray tan probably this evening. Yeah. Do, it's time. Do, they do the hands? I'm sorry? Does that include the hands or no? Oh, no. My hands will get sprayed for sure. All right, there you go. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. We got three rackets or two rackets today and then a marketeer of the week. The marketeer of the week is a total smoke job. So make sure you stay and wow. check that Have you one been wanting out. to say that? Like, have you been playing that one? No, it just kind of came to me. It just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll probably have to keep it down. I'm sitting here in the Naples William Ravis office. Super fancy. You can see all the awards behind me. So, I don't so want to be... many awards. I saw all that. Good old uh, Austin there, you know, taking some names. I like it. That, that marketeer might be a little too uh, risque for, for this office. I don't know. Is that the word? Risque? Well, I guess. I mean, I feel like risque yeah. is more like lingerie-like, not lingerie -like. Like illegal-like, but we'll use it. All right, let's get into racket number one coming from our association, the National Association of Realtors. They've put together a new fair housing action plan called ACT. Let's tell everybody what it is, and then Nicole will get uh, your two cents on whether this is a racket or not. So okay. uh, their new action plan is going to work closely with state association executives to ensure state licensing licensing laws uh i think that 85 degree weather is is getting to you yeah it's getting to me Jeepers. it's actually kind of on there i don't think that they see on uh so fair housing training they want to launch a public service announcement campaign that reaffirms nars commitment to fair housing and how consumers can report problems uh, they want to integrate fair housing into all of their conferences explore uh, the creation of a voluntary self-testing program they want to create more robust fair housing education and conduct a national study to determine what factors may motivate discrimination. They want to profile leaders who exemplify the best fair housing practices and workplace diversity and develop materials to help realtors provide consumers with information on schools that avoids, I like this one, that avoids that is a good one. fair housing pitfalls. So is NAR, Nicole, spending their time wisely in their while they approve this new fair housing action plan, um, right. I do think that this is all really, really important stuff. Especially, um, I feel like God, our world is changing so much so rapidly that it's super important to keep. I do think that NAR's job is to continue to educate the agent, and I do think that this is really, really important information. I, I'm with you though. I do love that last one because it's always really difficult as an agent to, you know, give any information on a school or even a town. So if there's anything that we can provide our customers so that they can get like the full picture without us getting into trouble is great. Um, I do this think that's a big something... one because because a lot of people make their decision based on that and they're looking to somebody who's lived in the area, somebody who's grown up in the area, their agent to right. guide them through that decision. Right. And you've got to walk a fine line as an agent when you start talking about schools under the current uh, way we operate as NAR 
agents. For sure. Well, it's super interesting though, is that, I mean, obviously I, I can't speak for everyone's community, but I'm assuming most communities, I mean, you're always hearing like number one agent in this town, like top producer in this town where people are going to some of these agents to get that information, knowing that they are like the top agent. And if you're not really able to sort of tread in that direction, I mean, it, it's probably super like, discouraging for the consumer, you know, cause they're thinking that they're going to some, you know, professional that's going to be able to provide them with some information. But again, I, I, overall, I don't find this to be a racket. I do think that this is obviously, um, better spent time than, um, our, than our, our going three dimensional. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I do I think it's all really good stuff and, and, and very important. So, mm -hmm. I will say this is the least racketish thing that NAR has ever done. Okay. Yes. It is something they should be doing more of. How do we set up, whether this is going to be a committee or, or whatever it's going to be, how do we set up more education and training for our agents so that they can be better equipped? Not how do we develop new technology for right. the agents and get crushed by companies like Zillow, but how do we make them last a lifetime generationally for the entire agent community this type of education training resource will help agents thrive as we continue to move forward so i think what's I super like i think what's super interesting here though too just to like sort of reach discuss is the the second bullet there about a public service campaign that reaffirms NAR's commitment. I think it's super important though to continue to sort of educate the consumers that this is what our jobs are because I think that so many times people have like these sort of like misconstrued ideas of like what we do and what our jobs are and like kind of how dirty they think we are. So again, I think all of the the points are like great. Yes. So NAR, way to go. Way you to go. have nailed it. Look at all you. Right. You're like giving them a little pat. Way to go, Nar. All right. Proud of you, Byron. Bracket, bracket number two. This is an Inman article. Of course, we'll link up all the articles. The last one was pulled from Realtor Mag. Nicole with the throwback there. I had to. I had to. Uh, this had one's to start the year off an strong. opinion piece on Inman from Matthew Zalecki. And Matthew's got four things you shouldn't shell cash out for anymore. He's got it shell out cash. I like it shell cash out. For any more, change your habits in 2020 and stop wasting your money, agents. So we'll go down the four here, Nicole, and we'll pick you and I if we think each one is a racket or not. So number one, per the IRS, you can only deduct 25 on a closing gift, but should you stop branding closing gifts as an agent? Racket or not? I find this to not be a racket. I've never spent any money on a custom branded closing gift. So I feel like it's not like a huge loss for me. I mean, you and I always sort of chat about like marketing stuff. So I do think that agents could probably spend money more on like a marketing piece with that, you know, like a pen or a, but I, I don't find that to be a racket. What do you think? I find it to be a racket if you've got something working that people are using. We were talking with Jill the other day about those tape measures, right? I mean, what what about a great tape measure that's branded? As a closing gift, though. With, with your contact information, something that the client's going to use over and over and over again. But that as reminds a we're talking about them. closing gifts here, Byron. Closing gifts. Yeah, this, that's a great closing gift. A tape mm -hmm. measure? Why not? I don't know because the tape measure costs like a dollar and a quarter. Well, it, it may only cost you five bucks, but why not brand the closing gift if it's going to be something they leave in their house for a long time? Okay. I think that's a total racket to stop branding closing gifts. If you're already doing a great job, keep doing it. Don't listen to Matthew on that one. All right. Number two, Matthew says, get rid of your coaching bill. One of the most expensive things you can buy is someone else's opinion. Should agents stop coaching? Wow. I think you probably have the, the most to say about this. So go go with it. <laughs> this is a total racket, Matthew. This, <laughs> this is a loser mentality. People that don't want to stretch and go for more growth and uh, get mentored by people that have done things maybe more creative than them, maybe had more success than them, or just to keep themselves accountable, to, to set a goal, to build an action plan, to, to put out a business plan to start of 2020 and then stay accountable to it. Listen, I know there's a lot of people on Instagram right now talking about free coaching. Those are people trying to build an email list, not trying to add value to your business. Anything that's for free, it's usually free for a reason, okay? I know 
I know I think the fourth one in here is leverage, but you talk about leverage, people offering up free coaching to steal your data is the ultimate leverage. Find a coach, find a mentor, even if it's a mentor within your team, that's going to actually be able to help you build your business. Uh, you're going to save plenty of years off your career by doing something like that. This is a total racket. So right now, Matthew, you are O for two with me. He's one in. He's one in one with me. Nicole. One in one. He's one in one with me. All right, all right. Nicole's Nicole's. Uh, she she is a racket. So she's checking out on that one. Me? How am I a racket? Number three, referral leads. So. Uh, he wants you to wean off instead of going cold turkey, but he wants you to get rid of your referral leads. That would mean Zillow. That would mean, uh, I guess, really any online referral source that you may be working with. What do you think, Nicole? So I don't, I find that to be a racket. Um, I do think that, again, like you were saying, if it's working, why get rid of it? Um, I do think what's nice in this situation, because it, it sounds like he's kind of talking about, again, more of a referral fee and not an upfront cost. So you're really only having to pay out the referral once it actually closes, which I don't really see there being any really real big downside to that. It's not like you're paying to get these leads and then not being able to generate anything. So you're pretty much paying your referral based on how well you can actually like close the deal. So I think this is a racket. I mean, I don't see any problem sending out a referral fee for leads. I mean, we're paying out agents pretty much the same referral fee if they're referring somebody into us. So I find this to be a racket. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's definitely a racket. He says uh, here, let's say you need 10 sales next year to hit your income goals. Okay. Well, I, I don't really know any agents that have a goal of 10 sales <laughs> in a 12 month calendar year. That to me is a pathetic goal. Even if it meets your income, maybe, maybe you don't have a lot of bills or whatever. Uh, but to me, that's a pretty poor goal. So sure, if you've got poor goals, poor ambitions, and you don't need multiple sources of leads, if you don't need leads coming in from anywhere, then certainly take this referral advice. But I think lead, uh, referrals rather should be a lead pillar for everybody. And if you're getting an ROI positive on it, why stop? Create okay. a system, uh, build out, scale a team, whatever it may be, so that you continue to profit off of that particular lead flow, but don't give up lead flows that are working. That's that's just not very smart. All right, number four is leverage. He says the term is almost as overused as disruption in real estate. Uh, so should leverage uh, be dropped here in 2020 for agents? So what's interesting here is if you keep reading it, he's talking about the fact that if you're making $100 an hour, it makes sense to pay somebody $20 an hour to do your um, to have someone like mow your lawn or do your laundry and have, you know, free, more, more free time or extra time to get more work done. And he's claiming that if you're gaining, you know, 20 hours extra work worth of hours in your day by, you know, sort of paying others to do your work, are agents really spending that additional 20 hours on work or are they spending it? Actually, he's saying that agents are spending more time sleeping. He actually uses sleeping in here um, and and not doing our work. We're sort of having some more free time. So I kind of feel like this is a racket too. I mean, I'll be honest, I'd so much rather spend, you know, $50 an hour to have somebody clean my house than, than me do it. Um, whether it's freeing up time for work or or just personal time or family time, I see zero problem with it. So I find this to be a racket too. Yeah, Matthew, you're 0 for 4 with me, brother. <laughs> uh, Matthew, who's the director of brokerage operations at uh, Fathom Realty in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm sure you're a great ops manager and I'm sure you're a brilliant mind in our industry. But yeah, obviously he would rather but, clean his own house though, it sounds like. But what I'll tell you is the people that I'm hanging out with, you know, the people that I'm trying to surround myself with in this industry, they want to build actual businesses. So they're not hiring an assistant and then going and sleeping in 14, 15 hours a day. I'm not personally seeing that. Uh, I think anytime you can leverage your time and put it into maybe more investments or, or recruiting or expanding uh, operations in, a, in another way for your team. Right. Uh, for your brokerage or for your office or whatever you're focused on, that's a good thing, man. So sorry, Matthew, you're 0 for 4 with me. Love to do a maybe a, 
a, a live debate with you so we can go through some of this stuff in more detail. Definitely don't want to have this come off across as I'm beating you up. But um, for me and for the way I'm looking at the real estate business and, and certainly masterminding with others throughout the country, all four of these would be a racket to me. All right. Marketeer of the week. This one's from Business Insider. We'll definitely link it up because you're going to want to check out these photos. A Los Angeles realtor threw a weed themed open house for a three and a half million dollar mansion. And he says this is just the beginning just of the, the beginning. crossover between cannabis and luxury real estate. So this was a Rodeo Realty uh, broker who partnered with Society Group PR and the Mota Group, a members only club for cannabis creatives to hold what they say is the first ever cannabis open house. Nicole. Nicole, would you have attended if this was in Connecticut? Uh, am I, I, I am I legally even allowed to do that? Uh, in in California, you'd be legally allowed to do that. Yeah, Connecticut, in, I you, think you probably wouldn't. I you think said that's in Connecticut, coming. so I don't, I don't, I don't know. If we were in California, I think it would be super fun. I mean, I have to tell you, it, it's beautifully displayed. Um, I, I guess I'd just be concerned of people that are coming in that maybe don't actually know what it is that they're eating. Um, and, and their reaction to all of it. I mean, it's super aggressive, but I guess it's sort of no different than serving wine at an open house, right? I mean... Yeah, um, it's it's beautifully displayed it's for beautiful. sure. I mean, they had it's CBD beautiful. massages going on. I mean, yeah, that, and they were doing CBD oil and cocktails. I mean, all of it just kind of sounds fun. And I think the bottom line here is, is that it worked. I believe that he actually sold this home. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and uh, that's correct. And Business Insider actually picked it up. And, and so he's got more publicity. I would say, uh, you know, the reason he's the marketeer of the week is, is because this is like the most bougie stoner event of all time, let alone the, can the first cannabis open house. So uh, you got to give him the marketeer. Stoner. I don't week. think I've ever heard those two words put in a sentence together. Yeah, these guys, I, I think Suave's got to flash some of these photos uh, if you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast, go check him out because it, it is a bougie stoner fest Super at fun. this open house. So mm -hmm. uh, congrats to that Rodeo Realty agent. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see. Anybody got any open house or, or any type of marketeers for us? Send them in. Put them in the comments and we'll check them out. Nicole? Yeah. All right, that's it. That's the that show. That was it. That was good. That's I, episode one hundred and three. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, it's, it's really hard not seeing you. I, I I miss having you up here in the Northeast. I know. Well, hopefully, we get a studio down here, and then this technology and the way we're doing this show will be a level ten compared to what we what we gave you guys today, which was like more of a level one. Hopefully, Inman doesn't kick us off I for these like I f for I these last couple of shows. We've been. I'm sorry, together. my setup is a ten. I mean, yeah. I am, I mean, I, I've got, I've got my people and my lights and my camera. Uh, I feel pretty good about it. I feel like until you actually invite me down to film in this studio, you're going to make, you're always going to be at one and I'm always going to be at 10. So, well, we'll see what happens. As long as Inman keeps us going through these technical difficulties, we'll be all right. We'll have a, we'll have a studio on the other end someday for sure. For sure. All right. All right, guys. Keep it real. We appreciate you. See ya. Thank you.